Hey guys, Jesse Tischauser here from Team Stag Arms. I'm going to do a quick video for you tonight on how to modify the loading port on a uh, shotgun. I've got a, a brand new Stoger M3000. I've actually taken it apart already. There's no re real reason for you to sit and watch me disassemble this thing when you can just uh, pick up the owner's manual just like I did, read through it, make sure you, you get everything apart the way it says, uh, clean it out with some brake cleaner, made sure it was completely dry so that there's no oil inside for the metal shavings that I'm about to create to uh, stick to. Got me a copy of this uh, January 2014 Shooting Illustrated. Inside there's a great article by my good friend Mr. Patrick Kelly on the Match Ready M3000 Stoger. Pretty good article. Check it out. Let's uh, go ahead and mask the uh, receiver off with some tape and get ready to cut this thing apart. All right, we've got the receiver in the uh, padded vise. First thing you want to do is kind of mark a spot where the trigger guard stops in the receiver. There are, there's obviously no reason to go past that point, so I'm just going to mark it with uh, some electrical tape. Go ahead and pull that trigger group back out of the gun and then start masking off the rest of the gun. Basically all I'm doing here is just trying to protect the receiver so that if I get lazy and a little aggressive with my files, I don't uh, tear the thing up. The more tape you use, obviously, the better, the more protected it's going to be. It really just depends on how much you care about this shotgun you're about to throw in barrels and basically abuse. Now that I've got it all masked off, you can see that I'm going to take the receiver down to this line right here on the side of the receiver, which is quite far. Um, you want to make sure that you're not going to get any, any, anything in the inside. On the far side, you've got the serial number, so you want to make sure you definitely mask that off and don't get into that. Um, I didn't take out my shell catch. You can do that if you so choose. I've done it both ways. Obviously, you've got to get a little bit more creative with the air gun afterwards to get the shavings out from behind it, but uh, it, it can be done either way. Tonight, I'm trying to do this in a little bit of a hurry, so I'm going to leave it in there and take more time later to clean it. Now, the other thing you need to watch out for is when you start getting up into the front of this, you want to be very slow and methodical and, get and keep checking with your follower to make sure that you're not getting into the area that holds the follower in. You can really easily turn this thing into a piece of scrap metal by cutting too deep and making the follower slide right through when you put the shells in. Here you can see the basic files I've got. I've just got a couple of really small files for doing some finished work, uh, some big files in the beginning. I have used a Dremel in the past, but I tend to get lazy and aggressive, and then bad things happen and I end up with a piece of crap. So I use the files and go slow and just take way longer than I probably could if I used a Dremel. The main thing is you just want to uh, be sure that you're not going to ruin this thing and turn a shotgun into a club. Okay, I got lazy. Here's the Dremel tool. I'm going to take some of this down on this one side. The other side I've already got to the, the maximum I can before I start getting the serial number with the file, which is real easy, but I've got at least double that yet to go and the receivers keeps getting thicker. And now I can't go smooth across, so I'm going to, uh, I can only work on one side at a time. So I'm going to take this down until I get close with the Dremel and then I'm going to go back to the files and smooth it up. And then when I'm finished, I'm going to round both of these edges so that as I'm loading shells in the shotgun and my thumb is rubbing here, it's got a nice rounded surface, not any sharp edges on the inside or outside to uh, be sliced by or just basically wear my thumb, especially during practice. All right, I've got the edges roughed out pretty good. It's got it fairly deep, uh, probably deeper than the uh, Benelli that I typically run. Zoom in here a little bit, see if you can't see, get a good idea of what I'm talking about. Probably going to lose focus as I get in real close. I'll try to get you to an overhead here next. All right, here's an overhead shot of the receiver. You can see how much wider the, the uh, unfinished aluminum is on the near side of the screen versus the far side as I've gone deeper down into the receiver where it gets thicker. All right, here's a little look from the back side. So you can pan around a little bit here. Again, this is still rough. I'm going to go over it with some of the smaller files and then I will finish with sandpaper and uh, make it really smooth, like 
shiny, polished smooth.